The energy mix uh, will evolve in the future. You know, there is a the climate change challenge and we are in a transition in terms of energy mix. And gas should really play a brighter role. Shell should be a V for fossil fuel of the future, in particular in combination with renewables. Why? Because gas is very flexible and it's a good combination to fulfill the intermittency of renewables. Because the people, they want light, they want power every day, every minute, so it's a question of reliability. So when you think of the future, the only fossil fuel we should, we should see a longer growth is gas. Uh, but to do that, we have some challenges, and renewable could be a challenge, by the way, and the, but uh, because we have to challenge particular core, because, you know, the people, they want to arbitrate for affordable energy. So it's a question of who will win in the future between gas and coal. The energy demand is mainly, you know, gas demand is mainly in emerging countries. That's been Asia, Southeast Asia, and also Middle East, by the way, has a growing demand. South America, but in a limited way. So there are their big potential, but uh, the po first point to have in mind is that gas demand is growing if the price of gas is affordable. So it's, there is a direct link between gas price and, and demand. So what do we do in total? But we, we have developed in since many years, we are among the top three of the industry, energy industry, many supply sources in Qatar, in Australia, in, in Russia, in Yemen, in Oman, Middle East, many supply sources. We have built a portfolio and a portfolio that we will trade ourselves will be of 20 million tonne by 2020. So quite a large portfolio in order to be able to optimize the allocation between the supply sources and the customers, you know, in order to be able to bring LNG to the customers and to be a reliable supplier. Because as we have a portfolio of uh, production base, we can be sure and ensure to our customers that we will bring LNG. So that's, uh, that's something which is important. And of course, uh, reliability for us, uh, for our customers is of essence. Yes, there is a change in dynamics, but in fact, the real permanent thing is that there is a volatility in this market. And, things, and if you want to face that volatility, you need to be cost competitive. So for us, when we select the new LNG projects, and we need to think already, even if today you have a sort of oversupply coming in front of us, but you know, to develop an LNG project, it takes five years. So we need already to think to the future wave of LNG projects. We think in terms of where are the cost competitiveness of the various projects. So we selected, for example, Papua New Guinea, because there is a lot of gas onshore, easy to develop, together with an existing plant of Exxon. We have also our, our, our base in, in Russia on Yamal. Yamal LNG is huge resources of gas, very low cost to develop upstream. Of course, some challenges because it's in the ice environment, but we are developing it. And we will, the first one will come on stream before year end. And we are also targeting to the US because the US with the share revolution is offering again a large base of low cost gas for decades. And so being able to develop LNG from the US shell is also another axis for development for the future. And it's why we invested in Tellurian. What can we do? We, first, we have to work on the cost of the full chain, which means selecting the low cost resources upstream, working hard on that, as I mentioned some of them, then working also to lower the cost of the LNG plants. LNG plants costs have rocketed from less than $500 per ton in 2000-2005 to $1,500, $2,000 per ton. This makes, at the end, the customers has to pay the price, so it makes expensive gas. So our target, we set ourselves an internal target. Why cannot we come back to something like $500, $700 per ton? Let's be aggressive. Which means adding technology, for example, small scale LNG or modularizing the plant, not looking to big trains, but to smaller trains. So there are some technological innovations to be developed. 
And then you have the last part of the chain, which is the regasification of the LNG. We have new technologies there again, like floating storage regasification unit. You can bring LNG in a country like Ivory Coast, like we've done, or in Pakistan, for $250 million there. It was before an onshore terminal was costing $800 million to $1 billion. So this is what we can do, working on the cost all along the chain. You know, it's one of the gas tech is one of these events where we know that all the industry will meet together. So the first interest, of course, is the networking. We have many meetings, and you know, this LNG business is a small industry. In fact, you have some some producers, some customers, but you don't have so many people. Right here in Japan, of course, it's a special place in Tokyo because Japan is the historic uh, buyer for LNG. You know, we have developed all our Qatar industry over Qatar energy position in relationship with Japan. We have a long history total with uh, IMPEX in, in Indonesia on LNG and now in Australia with ICTIS. So it's a good location again and GasTech is a nice event in order to connect and also to you know to share ideas like I developed to you about what should be the priority of the industry. And I this morning during the plenary session I think there was this idea about let's work on the cost and let's be more efficient together. Every, every player in the room was a good message to hear and I think it's also part of the way to move the industry in the right direction.